All right, let's go to the track. Uh, I guess in this video, we're gonna go ahead and review the Garmin Catalyst. The Garmin Catalyst is being marketed as a driving performance optimizer. But what exactly is that? Is that a track timer, a data acquisition device, or a robo coach? Well, it's kind of all of the above. And in this video, we're gonna be putting it through its paces at Virginia International Raceway and help you decide if this thing is right for you. This Catalyst is gonna ride along with four different drivers, including myself, to test Garmin's marketing claims. In the testing lineup, we're gonna take it out in TT competition, get the thoughts and perspective from a NASA Mid-Atlantic instructor, opinions from a Group 4 advanced driver, and finally end on my thoughts and opinions as a novice beginner driver. So be sure to stick around to the very end of the video for some interesting downsides, potential upsides, and how it compared accuracy-wise to the AIM Solo 2. At the time of this recording, the Catalyst retails for $1,000 US. The unit has a seven inch full color IPS capacitive touch display with a resolution of 1024 by 600. Garmin claims the internal battery is good for up to two hours, but the remote camera needs to be plugged in in order to record a session. In our tests, I found that if the external power is disconnected, it will record the session, but the remote camera will not record video. Speaking of remote camera, the camera is capable of delivering 1080p video at 30 frames per second with 140 degree field of view. The unit has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, I would assume for future OS and system updates. Expandable storage comes in the form of two micro SD slots, one on the side of the unit and one hidden behind a cover where it comes pre-shipped with a 32 gigabyte card. Also on board, the Catalyst has a 10 hertz GPS sensor and accelerometer. Lastly, for connectivity, it has Wi-Fi for system updates, track data, and weather updates. Bluetooth repairing to your car audio system or earbuds if you'd like to utilize RaceCoach. A little more on that later. Setup is quick and easy. Garmin includes literally everything you need in the box. Start by mounting the remote camera. You want to make sure that this is centered out of your line of sight. Next is finding a close to center location to mount the main unit that's also not in your line of sight. Then connect the camera to the magnet mount with the included USB cable. Now for power, Garmin includes a 12 volt cigarette plug adapter for cars equipped with outlets. But for cars without, they also include a fused hardwire option. Because we were swapping our unit in and out of different track cars, we opted for just using a portable USB brick. Lastly, to provision the unit, you'll want to set up your driver and car profile so track data can be organized neatly. And finish things off by calibrating the camera. And this is pretty much how I prefer the setup in my cockpit. Well, now that we've gone over all the basic details and setup, let's quickly talk about Garmin's top marketing claims. True track positioning shows your racing line on track, and then it suggests an optimal racing line on track. Catalyst can act as your driving coach, being able to give you in-car audio cues. Lap timer functionality, being able to show you if you're ahead or behind the previous lap. And immediate data review shows adaptive suggestions for key areas of improvement available for review after each session on screen. And most importantly, for drivers of all levels. So to test this claim, let's head over to the track and hop on board with James Packer for his time trial event, and we'll get his thoughts right after.
So it, it's neat because I'm looking at, at different segments, right? And it's telling me optimal versus my average. You know, they're telling me my turn exit speed could be 1.2 miles per hour faster. So I could be at 78.1, but I was only going through exiting at 76.9. Um, if I want to look at this segment right away, I just hit play and I'm watching it. So it's going to show me this segment and it'll just keep running through the different segments, you know, if I, if I keep watching it. Or I can just jump to, hey, I, you know what? Segment four has been tripping me up. I just want to jump right to it and bam, there I am. Segment three, now four, and, and here I go. But I think what's going on here is it might actually be stitching together an optimal lap for me to show me oh. what, what it would look like. Yep, that's pretty cool. So you can actually watch what your optimal lap could look like based on, I mean, I think I probably ran like five laps out there, maybe six. And so what that did is it just stitched together the best of everything to show me. If it's a great interface, you know, I thought it was gonna be a little bit big for in car, but where we mounted it, it was actually really nice because right it could size. be further away and it was big enough where even a guy who wears glasses, like it was just perfectly legible. The screen is super crisp. I was worried about glare when I was out there because like I can see glare now. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't a factor when I was in action. Now this is where I have a criticism. This is opportunity number two, right? Okay. So overview, braking, apex, and speed. Well, this is from five to the top of just before you go into South Bend. I mean, that's an enormous segment right here, mm -hmm. right? And so there's a, a whole lot of apexes involved in this, in this quote unquote opportunity number two. And there's different braking areas within this this quote unquote opportunity so i think there might be an opportunity for garmin to get a little more surgical about their segments and relaying those into opportunities because i think this is a great tool and i think it has huge potential but this this just covers so much in opportunity number two that it doesn't really help I think this is probably geared towards beginners and intermediate drivers, maybe not quite race drivers, because I think that the things that the racers would be looking for in terms of that immediate feedback at a glance, we're kind of missing from this. And there's some good information in, in terms of the opportunities, but I'm not sure that a, that a true racer would, would take a lot of value out of it. But I do think that someone who's just getting into track days and has a car and just wants to benchmark and see if they're improving, great tool for that. Like really great tool for that because this could, you know, help you understand like, I, I turned, yeah, I changed it up. I turned in a little bit later and apex a little bit later in here and you can see it in here and, and, and how that works for you. but. Um, I think from a racing and a TT standpoint, I'm not sure yet what the benefit would be over an AIM Solo 2. Well, how about we get the thoughts from an actual in-car driving instructor?
So I just finished giving a test run out on the little Garmin. It was pretty sweet, seeing some real-time data as we were going, uh, lap times, segment times, all that fun stuff. Pretty easy to set up in the car. Easy to read as you had it, big screen, which is nice. Pretty cool little device, I liked it. After instructing for a while, it's nice to see kind of as you're where, where you're progressing, what's going on in the car in real time, and then when we got out, we could look at some video, break it up by lap if you wanted to, if you knew there was something crazy that happened on a particular lab, you can just jump right to it, which is pretty fun. So all in all, it's a nice little piece of kit. Looks good, does what it needs to do. Seems pretty straightforward. The interface was super nice, very easy, intuitive to pick up. So if you're kind of getting into the sport and you want one device that can you can grow with and it can move with you, this is a great option. I didn't get a chance to look at all the data that it gets to kind of spit out, but for just a nice quick glance to grab all the important stuff, it does everything I think I would need it to do as kind of the intermediate advanced type level. So I, I think it would be great for uh, someone just looking to dip their toe into data and kind of move on from there. It looks like it's got great capability and a ceiling for what it can provide. So, And now that group four driver. So I just got back from my session uh, on track with the uh, the new Garmin unit, and I gotta say I liked it. I liked it a lot. The first thing that struck me was the size of the display, and it's much easier to read than the unit I'm currently using for uh, for data on track. Uh, so that big display is really really nice. Lights up green, lights up red, depending on if your you know your time's going up or down. I thought that was a really cool feature. So for for you know when you're on track, and you just want to glance. That size is is pretty awesome. The second thing, and the thing that I really was impressed by, was after I was done with the session. And I came in, uh, it automatically populated a session review and it showed you uh, areas for improvement. It had the track map showing you each segment and it compared your fastest lap versus your second fastest lap. And I assume over time it would build a library of laps so you'd have more to draw from even and it would get even better. But it really it broke down an analysis, you know, turn by turn. You could watch the video right there. I didn't have to offload it to my computer. I didn't have to take it out of my car even. So that was really cool, I thought, too. Just being able to, you know, the session's still fresh in my mind and I'm able to go through and review the data right there. So that was pretty awesome, I thought. I think everybody could probably benefit from it. You know, I'd say probably intermediate to advanced would probably be the best, but even novices would probably benefit. I mean, you could look at it, looking at the data right after you're done, you know, with an instructor, I thought I think would be really cool. That'd be a cool use of it. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think uh, I think everybody could probably benefit from it. Okay, so for my thoughts as a novice or beginner driver on track, so I like the immediate ability to review data and watch video all on the device right after each session, so I can review it with my peers or my instructor. No need for a computer, and that's nice because a lot of times I'm in sensory overload or from the excitement, you know, I might not remember everything that happened in my first couple laps or things that occurred, little nuances in my sessions of things that I need to work on, right? So it's making suggestions that, hey, you need to work on this that I might not even thought about. So being able to have this tool where I can say like, hey, this is an opportunity I want to work on, or that's right, I forgot about this thing, that this corner is something I want to work on. You know, that's something nice that previously I might have had a hard time being able to articulate. Now I have something I can point to and say like, hey, check this out, let's review this video and I can show the actual corner, the feature or the section of the track that I, I want to improve upon. So that's a nice thing. You know, as someone who's new to data acquisition, I, I really like the user interface and how it makes it quickly digestible. It's presented to me in a way that I can just look at it and immediately grab opportunities, right? This is all new to me, so I can say like, oh, I, I, can, I can be smoother here, I can break later here, because either it literally tells me to, or it literally shows an optimal line, and then I see my line, it's like, oh, well, make my line do that. From a really dumb novice perspective, that's nice. Close, close that gap, close that delta, and little things like that are, are really nice. So between sessions, I can review it, go, oh, okay, cool. 
And if I need any more explanation, I can just jump right back into the video and be like, oh, okay, cool. If you have a Garmin Connect account, the device will sync to it, which is nice so you can review your, your lap times and data on another device. But be aware, if you use Strava for tracking your running or biking or swimming or whatever, it's also gonna put your track data into Strava, which is kind of funny. Not a big deal to me, but if, if you don't want your workouts and stuff mixed up or whatever, be aware, maybe don't pair your, uh, your Garmin Cat to Garmin Connect. As for Race Coach, that in-car audio guidance cue system thing, none of our cars have actual stereos installed in them. And unfortunately, even with the audio turned all the way up on the device, I wasn't able to hear any of the audio cues through my helmet and over the engine noise. And Thompson actually had Apple AirPods and the device was able to see the AirPods, but we had trouble getting them to pair. It might be because this is actually an Android device. It's running Android 6.01, I believe. And maybe it's just because Apple devices and Android devices don't really talk very well. But in terms of audio cues, it would have been nice to hear coming into a braking zone, like you can brake 75 feet later or brake now or wait, 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 brake. But Again, I wasn't able to hear anything. One slight downside, I think for the price point, there should be an easy way to export the video with data and track overlays, especially if you have a Mac. So if you have a Mac, you actually have to get Android file transfer installed and then sift through the file system of the Android device and then dig your videos out. And when you get them, they're just raw 30 frame per second videos, nothing special, no track data on there. You know, I think that's something they could perhaps implement later with a software update or a, a, a Garmin separate application you could download, but I just feel like that should be an option they offer. It'd be nice to have. Now, one big miss we did find is the screen will not work with gloves. Kind of odd because I would say the majority of people in motorsport wear gloves when driving, but I'm not sure if it's a real deal breaker since you kind of set the device up in paddock or while you're sitting in grid and it kind of just comes to life once you cross start finish anyway but still kind of a miss right and if you're in the car and you need to configure something real quick maybe it starts raining and you need to change the the, the conditions from dry to wet you know you got to pull your gloves off and you know there's a lot going on in the car and that kind of just adds to the stress of things but you know little miss big miss i don't know i don't wear gloves but you should know that if you're thinking about getting one. Now for accuracy, we wanted to test its recorded lap times against the official timing and scoring data from the track because their uh, Packer has an AMB transponder mounted on his car. So we figured we use the official timing and scoring data as a benchmark, compare it to the variance recorded on the catalyst. But to make things kind of interesting, we thought we'd also run AIM Solo 2 and compare the variance there. Now, I know this isn't exactly scientific since we only ran one time trial event and only four laps. And I'm no statistician, so I'm not even sure if this is statistically significant. But what we found was the Solo 2, the AIM Solo 2 had an average variance of 0.026% over four laps from the official times from timing and scoring at the track. And the Catalyst only had an average variance of negative 0.003%. So Catalyst in our test was more precise. So again, in four laps uh, and, and the official timing of scoring data from the track being the benchmark, the AIM Solo 2 had an average variance of 0.026% and the Catalyst was negative 0.003%. I don't know if that means to you, but science. Okay, so my overall thoughts. I like the Catalyst. I think Overall, it's a tool that's gonna to help me and probably a lot of drivers of all levels progress their driving on track. And for a thousand bucks, I still think it's a great value. Other alternatives are gonna run you around the same price or slightly more. And quite honestly, I don't think the data is gonna be as easily digestible and quickly accessible as the Catalyst unit. Uh, I could be wrong there, I'm no expert in it, but this is my experience with the unit. And like I said, the user interface makes it very easy to extract that data after each session. And it only gets better over time. The AI is constantly refining that optimal line as it learns your driving style and as, as it learns the track. For like to haves, I think it was mentioned before from previous drivers, uh, it'd be really nice to have point to point data or, or sector data and even car information so the unit could 
make suggestions or have more optimal lap times based on what car you're driving and the horsepower and so forth. Sector data or point-to-point -point data be nice to have. So the unit could be used in say autocrosses or uh, hill climb events as the unit learn the course throughout the day. And again, I mentioned earlier, having the ability to do video overlay for video exports would be nice to have. But I think Garmin can still make good on this. The device is an Android device, so there's no reason why they couldn't apply software updates or, or send them out over the air. I do think there's an opportunity later, maybe for OBD2 pairing, either Garmin sells a peripheral device or maybe third-party devices. Again, Android device, it's basically just a hardcore tablet. It's got Bluetooth capability. It's a data logger. Why not be able to pair it with a third-party OBD2 Bluetooth reader? and then be able to save that data, either overlay it on your videos or record it and be able to extrapolate that separately into a spreadsheet or whatever you want to do with it. Things that I wouldn't know what to do with it, but mm. So overall, I like it. I hope you like this review. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you like cars. And you know what? If you're thinking about buying one for yourself, consider doing so through the affiliate link in my description. It doesn't cost anything additional for you, but it goes a long way in supporting my channel. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See you next time.